Okay, so today uh, I'm uh, visiting uh, Absolute Sound here, and uh, uh, Mike Woodcock wants to show me some things, and I'm not sure what he wants to show me, so rather than guess, I'll just let him uh, take the floor and have at it. Well, we're looking at preamps, right? Okay, so, yes. Yeah, this is right. a name, name preamp. Okay. It's quite good, actually. But it's kind of funny looking name because it's got this uh, funny looking badge on the front. What, is, what does that mean? That means it's been modified by Angela Gilbert Young, okay. who's a uh, founder of Blue Circle Audio and makes 90% of the things I have and touches almost everything we have to make it more musical because okay. of all the years of hard work. So inside this is a preamp fire. See in here, look inside here. Well, this whole section here, that's basically your preamp. There's left and right. You'll see it going over to the volume control over here. There's an Alps volume control, a little motor that turns it up and down. And then you probably wonder what all this is, right? Because it's, it's be confusing. What, what is all that? I have no idea. Okay. Well, these are logic circuits in the line. This is first a, a, a circuit board that they you can see they snap it out and manufacture it in a production line. And, and inside... Yeah, the, yeah hang on just one, one yep. second. What, what are all these little things here? That, I mean, is there some significance to these little things here that look like teeth? What is, what is that? Well, these boards are broken from a, a large print board that's made by a machine. So this is machine production, so they'll make hundreds of these. Okay, so they snap them apart. They snap them apart. Okay. And then the kids put these together with little tabs and ribbon connectors that name audio, and it's fine. That's the way production lines works today. And this looks kind of like white scotch tape. It is. Yeah, it's just a little thin ribbon connector. But this is just for the display, okay. and I think the light and, and, the, and, the, and the logic circuit controls from these, what, what I call idiot lights. We never okay. used to have these. This is name audio, and when I first built, first bought my stereo in '82, I bought from Julian Verricker, who who made name audio similar to this. I had a preamp just like this. This is about three thousand retail today. The amp, power supply, and and preamp I bought in 1982 was twenty one hundred. It was more money than my Honda at the time. So this is snapped together. My stuff has larger traces. You'll see the traces are a little smaller now. Everybody has gone to uh, cost efficiencies, maximizing profits, making things pretty good, but basically a circuit board is like a thin piece of tin foil copper. So if this was your copper inside here, and you got a piece of paper. Underneath the paper is the fiberglass, and then the copper itself, which is just a thin piece, and then you seal it on the top. And we all know that when you seal electrons and you're trying to make music flow up and down, it's not constant. We don't need a functional connection. We need a moving connection, because music's moving. Uh, an abundance of gauge or or copper, 26 electrons are per atom in copper. We need lots of it. It'll make it go quicker, smoother, uh, more uh, ample part-to-part -part ability for music because it's moving and we need it to move. So this is thinner stuff and you'll see that there's plus minus left and right. There's a bunch of inputs in the back here. This is where we plug things in like CD players and tape decks and streamers and all the things we use. These are all in the signal line. So all this back here is called logic circuit. And a logic circuit, for instance, this one represents this side. There's all these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which represents the seven buttons on the front. See these seven buttons here? Four. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we've got connections here. One, two on resistors, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, just here, times seven. So there's there's uh, 21 individual 20, solder connections. 22. 22. Yep, individual solder connections times seven. So that's 140, 154. Okay. So then we've got left and right side, so that's times yeah. two. Yeah. That's 308. Yeah. So for no reason other than uh, silly light. So if this goes off, 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 on, mm -hmm. that's this light over here, this connection, this input. Mm -hmm. And if it goes the other way, off, 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 on, that's yeah, this that's input, this one, yeah. and you got it. So yeah. it's very simple in the way that it functions, but why wouldn't you take plus and minus left and right on hard steel, copper, or anything, join them all together on one rail, or bring a rod back here that has a, right at this, the source input. Mm -hmm. has a switch. A switch, so yeah. that you're going like this between the fingers. I'm touching left and right, I'm touching left and right, I'm touching left and right, and there is no loss. And we haven't introduced all the noise of the voltage of these little inexpensive parts working. Mm -hmm. This is also logic feeding for all these parts to function. Part so of, part so do, you think, do you think that that's being done primarily because it's cheaper to do it that way as opposed well, to? Well, it also is more impressive to have lights. You okay. can get a remote control and switch the yeah. input. Okay. So if you can't get off your bum, you can okay. do it this way. Yeah. 
my name over in the 80s that I bought is over at Auto Storage. I'll show it to you briefly. Have a look at it real quick. So this thing is the same thing in a small mini chassis, and it sounds a little better than that one. They're both very good. Name stuff's wonderful to listen to, musical stuff. But you can see that it has a volume control. Mm -hmm. This is an amplifier. That's the pre-amplifier. So this represents what we're looking at on this on the store shelf over there. This is the switch. That's how Julian intended to do it. That's how he did do it. It was the right way. This is the this is a much much better contact for music. And without all those, if, if the end choir has ladies singing and one of them has a cold, have we wrecked the choir? We've altered it. It's not any good. It only takes one to mess it up. We got. 154 times two, bad singers in the choir, and I didn't count the other 280 connections left of it with voltage that all make noise. And they're in there. Now that's in a perfect world. If we're making a Ferrari, we don't want to take a, or if making an F1 car, we don't want to take a family van and try and soup up the engine and the shocks and leave the baby seat in and all the video stuff in there and drain the electrical and then try and race it at Monaco. Won't be much fun. We'll go around the track a couple times and go, ah, that's enough of that. You know, we'd rather have a, an F1 car. So essentially, this is the right way, and Julian always had it right. But business plans, people's wages, stuff like that, and, and the manufacturing process are going to take from that. No, no costs are omitted. So as the business grows, the business plan for bleeding edge or perfect performance or the right way it has to change. It just doesn't. It gets left behind. Yeah. The, the more important motive is how much money can we right. make? That's right. And can we cover all the expenses? And we got too big. Whoops. Maybe we should have chopped employees. Oh, you can't do that. All the things in life that we're, you know, in North America struggling with right now. Yeah, yeah. So as we're back to this thing, yeah, I would say that I can sell these and do sell these. The name is, I don't mean to beat on anyone. His name is Wonderful Gear. And as far as industry goes, I think it's as good as there is out there, if not better. For everything, it's industry made. But they are industry made. Luckily, 10 years ago, as you know, and you've known this person for decades more than I have. Angela Gilbert Young makes preamp. These two are the same price, 3000 Canadian retail roughly. This on the inside has a huge power supply with capacitance that's much larger and capacitance in the line stage here that's a dual that's much bigger. Everything point to point soldered with silver and Teflon. Everything sniffed the five orders of harmonics so that it's as best for music as it can be in each category. So this preamplifier parts, I would say one fifth of this is more than this entire thing. That capacitor, those four, are in line with the line stage capacitors that support, and there, here there's only 87 microfarads of line stage capacitance. So over here you have, oh, what is that, how many thousand is that? I put my glasses on. So versus 87 microfarads, we start out with, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have double what's there just on our prep board here. And then we've added uh, 47,000 microfarads times four. Plus assistance capacitors that work with it in line series parallel. Mm -hmm. So different caps have different speeds. Some mm -hmm. are bloaty, some are fast. Mm -hmm. The mix of learning over 30 or 40 years of putting things together well can support and fill in, because all these parts fight each other. And then you, you probably are wondering what this is. Yes, I was wondering what that was. So you'll see these are right on the main switch. There's an input switch done the correct way. Okay. All hands all hand soldered. You right. got it. Right. Point to point, no mistakes, and the solder joints are Solid. Wonderful. Yep. And they're made with lead solder, 70-30 lead solder, not the hard stuff. So it will last, and it will be a much better functional connection. These are oil and paper caps that are from 50s and 60s. They used them in guitar amplifiers, different things, and they make things slew rate or slow down so that there's more bloat or warmth, much like a tube sound. Mm -hmm. Guitar systems back in the 60s sound much different than they did today. Well, that's right. That's why, you know, as a guitar player and a, and a bass player, that's why people want that old stuff because it sounds different than the new stuff, and, and they would much rather pay a lot of money to buy that stuff. They know that the paper caps need to be replaced because they're all dried out by now. Right. So 
So yes, that's why that stuff is so desirable. Yep, and these are X2 caps, which are very, very quick, but offer a delicacy that you can't get from some other capacitors, and they are, they've used them in car starters and computers, all kinds of different things that have applications, and Angela Gilbert had found inside these, the use of these allows, in the switch, you can switch it in and out of the line, mm -hmm. so that instead of buying two preamps, they're selling you one that's X amount of dollars or a different one, and you get a solid state signature or a tube signature, you can get both, Mm -hmm. and adjust your sound. You won't get sick of your preamp or get rid of mm -hmm. it. So we've got outboard power supply, 10 or 20 times the value of components, all direct soldered. As you can see, the Alps volume control inside there, it's much larger yes. in model than yes. this one. Yes. They're not even close, the two of them. Yeah. And then the same with every single part in there. So it's like a 10 to 1 at the same price. And the beauty isn't that these people are doing it wrong. It's that this person is doing it right. Yeah. And then we have no overhead, no employees, and this is right. made by the one set of beautiful hands. So, right. if, again, if people knew what I did every day, there'd be 500 people lined out outside the store. Right. This thing sounds better than any ten to $15,000 preamp I've listened to and had in the store, and I've had them all over 43 years. This thing is 3000 Canadian retail. It's mm -hmm. remarkable. Actually, it's 3200 now because we put both balanced and single-ended out, output input on it and output. We used to just have three inputs and single-ended. We've added this, fully balanced input and fully balanced output to mm -hmm. it. So you won't be wanting for our larger preamps if you don't need it. If you don't and, have so and there's an upgrade path on the back. You'll see the back here. The power supply does connect yep. with an XLR jack yep. into the input. Right and you'll see another one. Oh, need my glasses again. You'll see another one beside that. So this one says SP cap pack. So an SP cap pack, you'll see will line right in, comes in through the back, SP cap pack. So that's an upgrade. And the upgrades for all components for upgrades go here. It's wired directly to this capacitor base in line with it. That's just my son visiting. And then what we do is we have two different types of capacitor sizes that are standard. This is one here. So this is one half of a million microfarads that I can simply add on with a plug-in connection XLR into the back of this SP cap. Right here. So I'll put that in and now I've added, taken that and I've added from the, I think that's 188,000. Mm -hmm. I added 500,000 more. Mm -hmm. And it's like adding the energy of the sun into your preamplifier's line state. And how much is something like this? That's $660 Canadian. That's nothing. Right. And if we go up, you usually get thicker lines in most components, but you never ever get much higher than 100 to 200 microfarads, sometimes 1,000 in a preamp's line stage. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable that when engineers and guys look at putting capacitance on here, if you're limited by all of these things and you're limited by the thin board, adding things like this, you see this modification? Yeah, here? yeah. You're sure you're wondering what all that silicone Yeah, it was. was. Mm -hmm. So these are 33,000 microfarads times three added, as you can see, straight to the line stage of this name preamplifier. The rectifier bridge that's here can only take so much when it turns on and charges the power supply that runs this, which connects from an amplifier from name. It has two supplies on one to run this. So you connect this to an amplifier and all of a sudden this lights up. Mm -hmm. Angela figured out how to put the maximum amount of capacitance without ever hurting the rectifier bridge or the or the power supply that's going to charge these when it starts up. So now we have ample supply for this board. So this is a modification. This was about a $250 modification, which is remarkable for the work that's here. You'll see the capacitors are on 14-2 rails of hard copper, not mm -hmm. on a circuit board closed off with the, mm -hmm. as you know, the best dielectric in the world is air. Yes. Not closed off in wire, not closed off in anything. Teflon and silver, like we have in this preamplifier, is much better. Teflon is porous like a sponge. So it allows for air on the surface. And the, it, for music, which is moving, we're not making a, one of these lights. Yeah, yeah. So we're, we're moving the music around. Functional connections are good for lights. Anything will work. In music, it's different, it's moving. So this modification we do on lots of components, but if I play this preamplifier and have the exact same one without this modification, this one will make the other one sound like it's dead. Mm -hmm. 
or broken or tired. Mm -hmm. Not even close to musicality change. But when you add multiple amounts, I can only go so far because this trace in smaller parts and the way that this is closed off in a circuit board, there's only so much it it'll limit it. I yeah. can only move the needle yeah. five or ten percent. Yeah. If I do it here on a perfect scenario, on a perfect mm -hmm. layout, mm -hmm. I move the needle ninety percent. Right. So I can I get that engineers will look at this and go, oh, that's overkill. It's way overkill for what you're going to do. But is it? Mm -hmm. If you've really had an open wheel race car and you put the engine in right and the fuel in right at 130 octane, it's unbelievable. But if you put 130 octane into a family van, it's only going to do so much. Mm -hmm. So production is, is what's killing it. We're well, so lucky to have this. Well, right. And why wouldn't I want this? Correct. Of course. I mean, you're just simply I mean, looking at it. Yeah. You're buying 10 times the gear for right. one-tenth the price. Right. And you're doing endless upgrades without ever right. getting rid of this and taking a lot. That's right. That That's a big deal, too, because... You know, you see a, a, a lot of places that they're swimming in used gear because there's no upgrade path for the stuff that they got rid of. And they didn't they, they, they didn't put the greatest things in the base components. To begin with. Correct. If you do that right, these capacitors, by the way, are yeah. good for Angela Gilbert products, every DAC, digital analog converter, every phono stage, mm -hmm. every preamp, every integrated, and every amplifier. Yeah. Universally, it's the worst business plan in the world for making money, but the best one to hug every one of your customers. Right. That's right. why I support exclusively Angela Gilbert Young Gear. Yeah. I'm helping people. So I end up with disciples, not customers. They come in, they're so happy. Most of them would adhere that it's like me selling crack cocaine mm -hmm. for audio. Yeah. It's instantly addictive because it's the first time they've heard a free flowing piece of music played back, not a piece of electronics that's trying to convey mm -hmm. music. So basically all the stereos that I've existed, we used to have them before, 4,000 and 10,000. It was a louder version, a bassier version, but it wasn't really better, and they all sound like electronics stereos playing. Well, okay, I mean, I over my long career in the audio business too, mm -hmm. uh, and just as a consumer in the audio business myself, yep. I, I've come to believe that the market has gotten so competitive that typical audio manufacturers think that they have to do stuff like this to compete, or they have to sell you a big box with tubes that are glowing to make you think they're really doing something. Well, we nobody yeah. is doing this. No, no one, no, no one, one ever has done this. Is doing this. Even in the twenties, you may have had uh, a couple of guys from Germany in their garage do it for a year or two, yeah. but you, they're, you weren't artists like Angela Gilbert. You weren't over. Thinking outside the box, doing things like capacitor changes for sound shaping, things like the damping factor resistor she makes. You, you know, the damping factor, you look at an amp, oh, damping yeah. factor, how is damping yeah. factor? Well, damping factor means negative return channel is you're controlling the woofer. Yeah. Well, a damp, you know, on a, on a piano, when you hit the third pedal and it goes, it goes ping, and then you hit the third pedal and it goes ping, yeah. and lasts for a long time. Yeah. Well, let's look at Gordon Gow from. Macintosh. Say Macintosh yeah. in the 60s. Yeah. He would be turning over if he knew that his amplifiers had damping factors at three and 400. He used auto forming mm -hmm. around the transformer. In this circuit design, he would have damping factor on a 250 RMS amplifier. It's a big, giant amp oh, yeah. like this. Oh, yeah. It was 14 or 15. Mm -hmm. It was low. So the woofer could make the stroke mm -hmm. and it would be allowed to finish or mm -hmm. flutter. Yeah. That's why the big, you know, the big rock and roll yeah. speakers we yeah. have, yeah. they sound boxy. They don't look or nasally boxy. Yeah. yeah. It's because we're over damping or over controlling every stroke of every piston. Mm -hmm. We should let them go. Mm -hmm. All these little things and developments I've only learned from being around Angela Gilbert for the last 10 years and particularly the last three, where I spent a lifetime doing stuff and I'm barely smart enough to, to understand what it is she's doing. But when I saw inside it, I thought, I got to tell the world. So there was a movie made about her, uh, just local. Yeah. That got a great award. Uh, the people come in and, and meet her all the time. Right. She's painted her clothes since the dawn of time. All artistic, abstract, thinking outside the box. And let's well, face one, it. And, and listening to you talk about this stuff, one of the things that occurs to me is that there's a couple things going on here. Um, there's the underlying design, yep. which has to be there before you start building anything. And there, then there's the execution. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, even if a manufacturer had the design. They don't, but even if they did, yep. they still couldn't build it. No, they couldn't. And they'd need beyond expert 
solder is and there isn't any joint. one no we just i was at the factory six months ago and i'm in there just in and angela's soldering a simple 12 gauge output on mm -hmm. an amplifier mm -hmm. so i turned i went turned my phone out and i started timing her she goes well what are you doing i was like um i'm timing it she goes oh how long and i said a minute and 44 seconds mm -hmm. And I, it was remarkable. I said, you are 33 years into building electronics every day, seven days a week, because you don't do anything other than this. And you just took a minute and 44 seconds doing something people take about 30 seconds to do. And I said, the only reason that you do that is because you see it as creation or art, not a task. Well, one of the things we were talking about earlier when we and every joints like that in here. When we were, uh, uh, you were showing me this. Mm -hmm. is uh, we were talking about the wave soldering machines and what they do and uh, how the uh, the orientation of the solder itself makes a difference oh, sure. in terms well, of the connection. So do you want to talk about that? Yeah, let's think about Because everything is wave soldered. If this is an, a magnification of a solder yeah, joint pin yeah. hanging out at the yeah. bottom of a board, Yeah, we'll look at it and what will happen is a wave, a board will pass mm -hmm. with hundreds of connections mm -hmm. and the wave will just pass by and touch them. Right. It's at very hot temperature. Enough so that you know has whatever spray flux they've made to, to make it stick mm -hmm. the solder itself to the mm -hmm. pen joint and mm -hmm. complete the connection will happen and it's a functional connection. Mm -hmm. But it's so hot that when you're hot and you're liquid and solder, the heavy particles, as you know, will go to the bottom. Right. Right. So if our board's up here and our trace is coming in and we're linear, we had to go down the pin now. All the heavy metal particles, which are where the electrons mm -hmm. are, mm -hmm. music going, okay, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to come down, collect around the bottom, mm -hmm. then I'm going to go back up and go out. And there's a thing called vectoring, yep. E C T E U R. Yep. 1914, Alps Corporation did a white paper on it. When you vector, it's to make things go fast and slow, fast and slow, mm -hmm. like audio does, mm -hmm. moving. Mm -hmm. And if you make the little joint around the bottom, you've just created a little fuse. Mm -hmm. We don't want fuses or start stops in our solder pins. Right. You have to keep the ball of the pins high. Like in here, you'll see these little balls, and these are lead solders. Mm -hmm. So I would see Angela take both hands and wick, sometimes a double solder joint in here, and build that up three times. So she would have that solder so that all the metal particles stay in the ball in the center. So it would meld or weld correctly, not drip. Mm -hmm. Where you'd make it all go to the bottom and you'd make a funny contact. Mm -hmm. That's particularly bad when it's a, a vertical connection. So these things vector correctly. And it's immeasurable when you do every single one of them right to find out that every single one of them wrong isn't as good musically. You'll never know till you do it right. And mm -hmm. when I heard, when you hear this stuff, it's very easy to hear that it's musical, mm -hmm. far more than everything else. So we're very lucky. And if if you do it in a production line, the problem is you got to have a team of kids there that are as expert solders, yeah. And then a couple of people over to oversee them, right? And say, oh, check and make sure you did everything right. Well, you just slowed down the line, and now right. this isn't three thousand; it's thirty thousand. Right. You've right. got you've gone too far. You it's just the business plan model does not work for buildings, lawyers, right. accountants, right. everything right. we do, worldwide marketing budgets, online budgets, travel, shows, production, promotion, everything you do yeah. costs money. Well I so appreciate we're, we're very lucky. I appreciate your time talking about all this. So Thanks maybe, for your time, Walt. Maybe uh, maybe the next time I come in uh, we can talk about uh, something else that I have some questions about. So thanks a lot. You're welcome. Huh?